PQ here, PQ Speed Shop. I want to take some time to show kind of behind the scenes what I do to measure, because I don't always show all the minutia when I'm doing this stuff. I put a panel on in the video. So I want to show some of the ways that I used in order to make sure that the panels go in perfect and everything stays aligned and square. First thing is tape measure. I prefer tape measure with a magnetic end on it just simply because we're working with metal and it sticks. So that's what I use. When I take my measurements, I write everything down in a book. And all my measurements are in here, I draw little pictures, show me this, that, the other, and so I can go back and reference later because if I step away from here for two weeks and come back, I'm kind of lost. So right on the metal panels, both new and old, I got two different types of paint markers. I got a white one and a black one. And a good old fashioned soapstone. Next thing you want to use is a level. Make sure everything's level. This is a real cheap Harbor Freight special, but it's a level. Most important piece when you're doing major body work like this is a tram gauge. And a tram gauge, if you look them up and you try to buy one, they're super uber expensive. But thanks to another channel, uh, DIY Auto School and my friend Pete, he shows you step by step, hilarious video. If you get the chance, check it out. Uh, how to make this, and I'll use his terms, motherfucking tram gauge. So what's a tram gauge? Tram gauge is a piece like this that you used in order to measure. And if you know anything about squaring things up, if you're going across, everything needs to be the same. On a body like this, there's points on the car that are the same on both sides. Like this is the last fender screw on this side, and then there's a front fender screw over here. Let me see if I can back this up. So we can see that this is, this is in here, and I can take the measurement as well. But once I've already taken the measurement and I've set the tram gauge where it needs to be, now I can check to make sure that we're square on the other side by just flipping it over to the opposite side. And if it doesn't fit or if the measurement's off, then you did something wrong and your, your car is not square. Um, but that's, that's what this is. This is a tram gauge. A lot of times when I, when I was taught years ago in body shop, the tram gauge was used a lot in uh, collision repair. You got hit in the front side, you need to make sure everything got pulled to, to the proper side. But in any case, if you get the chance to check out my friend Pete at DIY Auto School on how to make the motherfucking tram gauge, I probably got 10 bucks, maybe 15 wrapped up in this. Real easy to make, step by step, but it's a hilarious video of him trying to get measurements on his own with a tape measure. Uh, it's great. So I enjoyed it and I want to thank Pete for showing me how to make this motherfucking tram gauge. Pretty good uh, repop from AMD. So I guess you can tell, PQ Speed Shop. Next thing coming is this frame hour right here. I went ahead and braced it. Took measurements throughout, all the way up and down. Took photographs of everything. And uh, I'm about to get out the plasma cutter. So I think I want to take it out straight out this way instead of trying to drop it down that way I don't have to move this this brace and everything can stay in line so that's where we're heading next
morning. This is the day after the frame cutout on the Project Challenger. Um, hold on a second. I'm going to have to uh, <clears throat> turn this down so YouTube doesn't get upset with the music. So, um, last night, as you saw in the video, I spent some time cutting out this old frame rail. And so, uh, let's take a look and see where we're at here. So, you can see the old frame rail, and then there's the new one. Um, it's a AMD frame rail. And it's a very good, very close matching. There's a couple differences I noticed on this uh, frame rail. On this, there is a bolt, secondary bolt hole, up, or third bolt hole up here. So you have one, two, and three. So there's a third bolt hole here that is not on that one. Don't know that I'll need it. Maybe for nothing. We'll find out soon enough. I have to go back and look at my pictures. The other part is different is this is a four-speed car. So it has this bracket on here. And I probably could try to cut the bracket off and uh, reuse it again. Um, but then I got to get the placement right as well. Which is a matter of just measuring and everything on this one and comparing it to the old one. Uh, but Brewer Performance has that piece. It's like 30 bucks for the bracket. It's uh, thicker than the, than the other repops that other people are making. So um, I went ahead and ordered that this morning. Uh, they're in Ohio, so it probably uh, should, be, should have it like Monday, Tuesday next week. But in the meantime, I still have other stuff I can work on. I've got to pull this tail section off and start rebending that and making some changes to that um i took the fender back off obviously to get to the but i gotta get in here i mean i got plenty to work on um gotta finish cleaning up with this frame attached to the cross member and clean up the cross member get that all cleaned up um get it ready for the new frame rail and i also still need to pull out some of this old uh stuff here i'm going with uh aftermarket uh, heating air conditioning unit on this uh, so I won't need any of this box or anything so I'm going to go ahead and pull all that stuff out I, took, I spent the day yesterday in the morning uh, taking photographs of everything to make sure when I pull out the pedal assembly and all this stuff that I'll be able to get it back in the right spot um, still perplexed over this door fitment like I said, this isn't this isn't attached completely. It needs to come down and go back. Or, I'm sorry, the quarter needs to go back. The door needs to go down and forward. Um, but you can see here, here's, here's the hinges. And they're all the way forward. Now, could I have placed it a quarter inch off? Sure. I mean, this kind of tells you this is kind of weird. But see, remember, I'm, I did the A pillar and this piece. This piece was kind of non-negotiable. Once I got this to where it was going to go, because I, I left I left some of the structure intact when I put this in. So it was kind of non-negotiable where this thing could go. And that had the part that was non-negotiable already had the hinges attached. So I'm thinking to myself, well, what's what's the options I could do if I, I still have to go more forward and I can't? Well, there's two options. One is I can wallow out this hole just a little bit wider, quarter inch wider, which is probably the route I would go just simply because it's not, it's going in. If it was going the out, out way, I wouldn't do it because you would lose some of that structure. But because it's going that way, I, I think I could get away with it. Problem with that is once I move this over, this bolt hole that goes on the inside is not going to line up. So the other option is to actually physically go in and cut out the inner structure piece that's in there with the hinges on there basically physically move it over reach weld it in and fill in the back portion behind it we're talking a quarter inch here so we're not talking like a major amount but we're talking a little bit of, enough to make it more difficult um these are things that i'm thinking about i haven't decided to do anything yet because nothing's been welded yet on as far as the quarter panel and the inner rear wheel structure so I want to get this frame rail in, get the fender on here, 
kind of get an idea because the inner structure is going to determine where the fender goes. I need to get all of this done. So the, the next step will be I'll get this frame rail in there, at least get it like put in there and clamped in place, if not welded, probably welded, and then um, spin the car around so that basically I'll get the passenger side on this side and be able to start working on that and uh, try to marry up the back end and then the front end. Um, yeah, some people might give me give me hell for using the plasma cutter on this last night, but like I said, I I mounted everything and I uh, welded it all down, so um, this is solid. This isn't going anywhere. And uh, I took all my measurements and I wrote them down, how far they are across them. Because in the end, this here is not a numbers matching car, but the serial number for the car is right here on this thing. So if I can save this radiator support I might try but it's it's been banged up um, in the past it's bent it's not straight it's supposed to be straight it's not straight and that's there's a little boogie right there so that tells you it's been moved a little bit up front here and it's not from a collision repair that's from somebody pulling out an engine or something because you can see if you know anything about body work the way it bent the force was back here and forced this side to buckle so um, it may have been something that uh, happened when I pulled the engine out this last time and just didn't notice it, or uh, it might have been there for a while. In any case, uh, we'll be putting it back in, the engine back in the other way underneath, the way Mopar did it from the factory. Um, I still have to pull all this stuff apart in there, so I've got, like I said, I've got plenty to do while I wait on that other part. And if you can see the, loca the location of that bar and that bracket is right up against this inner structure. So I, it's important that I go ahead and weld it in first before I uh, put it in the car. But apparently it's got, a, talking to brewers, it has a location tab to locate it on the frame so you know exactly where to put it. Plus I'll take my measurements as usual. And it's a better to have two or three reference points than just one. But everything else on it looks really good. I mean, I, I'm happy with how close it is to the actual one. Like I said, there's, there's a couple small differences, but overall it's a good, solid piece. It's, a, it's the right thickness of metal. It's the, the right shape, length. Uh, everything seems to be in the right spot. Uh, once it's painted, I'm going to be hard to tell it's not an original. Not that I'm trying to pass it off as an original because, oh, well, we're making videos, so obviously it's not an original. Anyhow, I want to touch base a little bit. Uh, back to work. Thanks. Now that I've cleaned up that rear section of the frame rail where it connected to the cross member, I can go ahead and test fit our frame rail. no means ready to weld this in this is just simply a test fit and it's fitting real well I mean everything seems to line up like I said I went back and referenced the old one to see where this inner shock support comes down and we're we're sitting just right there um, the notches are in the proper positions along the way uh, this is sticking out enough where that tab that was on here comes up where I need to weld it back on um, so until we get that Z bar ball mount for the four speed that gets uh, welded to the frame. We'll, I have it clamped in the back. I'll probably throw a clamp on the front here, uh, tighten up this bolt, and we'll leave it until we get that on and we're able to weld it. In the meantime, I'm gonna take some of these uh, stickers off 
And the way you do that is with a heat gun. It's the best way to do it. That's how you get them off without leaving a bunch of glue on there. This makes it so much easier. If you rip them off before you heat them up, it leaves a bunch of that white glue behind. So basically you're just heating up the glue, pulling it off. Makes it easier when you go to sand it later. On the thinner panels, you can do it from the back side and heat up the panel and do the same thing. Presto Changeo, look at that. Nice, right? So now you know how to do it on your own. Thanks.